In this presentation, we will enter and adjust an entry related to prepaid insurance within QuickBooks Pro 2019. For more accounting information and accounting courses, visit our website at accountinginstruction.info. Here we are in the home page. We currently have the open windows open. In order to open the open windows, we go to the view dropdown and select the open windows list. We're going to go to the reports and take a look at the insurance we have so far. So we're going to go to reports drop down up top. We're going to go to the company and financials and start off with the balance sheet. So we're going to go to the balance sheet standard. And then we're going to change the date range. I'm going to do it up top in the customized reports and change the dates from 010119 to 022819. And then say OK. That's going to be our information. Now we're going to make some adjustments related to insurance. So if we go down to insurance, we're going to find an account called prepaid insurance. Now note most adjusting entries that we have, if we're, it's a real true adjusting entry, it's going to have a balance sheet account, at least one and one income statement account. And so that's going to be the case here. So in many of the adjusting entries, we can go through and say, okay, if we're dealing with insurance, what are the two accounts that will be involved? Well, one's going to be prepaid insurance here, and the other is going to be on the income statement or profit and loss, which logically would be called insurance expense. So those are the two transactions we're going to have, or the two accounts, the one transaction and the two accounts, or the one adjusting entry and two accounts. So what we have here is the 11000 Why is it here would be the first question. How did it get here? And why is it here? Why didn't we just expense it at, at the first point? I mean, how, why, what is prepaid versus insurance expense? And so that's the first thing we've got to know. And the reason it's here, if we double click on this item, we could say, here's the transaction that put it here. If we double click on them, it says that we have insurance and uh, that's going to be the information that we have. It's going to be, if we go to the policy, or it says right here in the memo, 12 month liability insurance that we have. And then we put it to prepaid insurance, even though it's in the expenses area. Now, it could have been, this means we paid for the insurance. So you would think, why wouldn't we just put it to insurance expense at the other side rather than a prepaid account called prepaid insurance, which is an asset. And the reason is because we haven't yet consumed it yet. So insurance is one of those things that it's always prepaid, meaning we always have to buy insurance before we consume it. We buy insurance before we have coverage. And then the coverage gives us coverage over time. Even, even if we don't use it, even if there's no problem, they're still giving us coverage over a certain time period. So that's how we have to think about it. When we pay for it, we haven't used it yet, especially if we pay for an entire year's worth of insurance. That means we paid for an entire year and we haven't, we haven't used it, any of it yet. So, and that's the case that we have here. That means that if we had expensed it, then this expense would have been in there at the end of January. And it would have made January look a lot worse than it actually was in terms of actual expenses. We paid it, money went out, so cash flow is kind of can look bad because our cash flow uh, went down. However, if we compare our performance from January to February, it would be unfair to January to say that there was an $11,000 expense when all we had done was pay for it then and we're getting the same coverage in February. So if we did a month by month comparison, that would be unfair. It wouldn't look right. We would think that we did worse in January than we actually had because we would have this expense. So in order to make that look better for our decision making to be able to compare we have to put this in on the books as a prepaid uh, insurance and then we'll allocate it in accordance with the coverage that has happened so and that's what we have to do that's why we have to adjust it so that's why the adjusting process is part of the plan and we have to go in there and say okay now we've got this eleven thousand dollar insurance that's prepaid how much have we consumed on a periodic basis and that's the only way to really make our accounts correct on, and comparable from month to month. To do that, we look at the policy or we can just see that it's indicated here that when we bought it, it was for uh, 12 months. So if that's the case, if it's for 12 months, then uh, as of the beginning of February and where our cutoff date here is the end of February, then we're going to say, all right, well, it's 11,000 for 12 months divided by 12 one month has passed which means that we've consumed not about 917 of the 11,000. so what we need to do then is reduce this by 
the 917. In other words, if we go back, closing this back out, closing this back out, we need to reduce this by the one month's worth, 917, and we need to expense it because we had now consumed it. Again, nothing may have happened. We might not have had any problems that the insurance helped us with, but the insurance gave us coverage, and that's what insurance does even if there is no problem. So we have consumed one month of coverage. So that's going to be the adjustment we will have. We'll reduce this and we'll record to an insurance expense. Now, normally we do that with a journal entry, which can be found in companies up top and go to make journal entry. And we would make the journal entry as of the end of the month, uh, end of February, debiting the insurance expense and crediting the prepaid insurance. But that we would need to know debits and credits to do that. So this is one that's pretty small journal entry. So we could do this in the register. And that's what we'll do here. We'll go to the register and put this into the register. So to do that, we could go to banking, use register. And we'd have to pick the register that would be related to the balance sheet account. So we can't choose interest expense because these are only balance sheet account related registers. We could choose then the insurance or the prepaid insurance. The other way we can find it is I'm closing this out. Go to lists up top, chart of accounts. And then we're going to go to once again, prepaid insurance. Prepaid insurance will double click on that item. There's the prepaid insurance. We're going to make this journal entry as of the end of the month, 0-2-28-1-9. And we're going to say, uh, we don't really need the vendor here. It's going to be a decrease that we're going to have. So we're going to decrease it instead of increase. So we don't need to know the debits and credits here. That's the point. Although it would be very good to know debits and credits if you're doing the adjusting entry process. But if there's only two accounts, we can kind of get away with still using these registers. It'll still create a journal entry and we'll still look at it. We'll still look at the debits and credits. See, it still defaults as a journal entry. It doesn't know what else to do with it. There's no form within QuickBooks to drive this, but the registers can give us kind of a, a workaround for accounts that at least are, are only two, two uh, accounts long, transactions or journal entries that are only two accounts long. So this is gonna be the other side, insurance expense. So if we select the dropdown, we could find insurance expense. Typically that will be there if we had the chart of accounts provided for us by QuickBooks, we just chose an industry. QuickBooks will usually have one of the expense accounts being insurance expense because pretty much any business should have some kind of insurance expense here. So this is gonna be, I would call it an adjusting entry for insurance expense or something like that for the, for the note so that we can note it. And then it will be an adjusting entry or a journal entry. And we could see that if we double click on this little journal entry thing here, there it is. And once again, it's a credit to prepaid insurance and a debit to insurance expense. Now I'm gonna go ahead and copy this note and put it on both lines. So when we see the detail in the transaction report, we'll see it in both lines. And then we'll save and close this and say, yes, I would like to save the changes and uh, this should have been recorded, okay. And I'll save and close this and we'll close this. And then if we go into the balance sheet now, the prepaid insurance is down to 10,083, which of course, if we, if we took our 11,000 divided by, divided by 12, that would be 916, we rounded to 917. And then if I multiply that times uh, 11, that's how many months are left that haven't expired. It's about uh, 10,083, meaning this represents 11 months that are still, will still be covered by. We don't have to pay for any more insurance for 11 months uh, represented here. If we double click on it, we'll see the detail. There's the 11,000 that we paid for a 12 month policy. Here's us representing that one month has expired of it, bringing the balance from 11,000 down to 10,083 from 11,000 representing a year, the 10,083 representing 11 months still to be consumed in the future. Let's go to the other side of it on the profit and loss or income statement by going to the reports drop down up top and the company and financials. We'll then change the date range from 010119 to 022819.
And we're looking for this insurance expense. There's the insurance expense. That's the one we want if we double click on the insurance expense. We then find our adjusting entry. We have the memo here, expense, which will, of course, increase the uh, expense and decrease the net income, as many adjusting entries do. So if we do not do the adjusting entries, quite possible that we're kind of deceiving ourselves in terms of our revenue, <laughs> because uh, oftentimes the adjusting entry will decrease the revenue. So we'll close this back out. And so that's going to be uh, this transaction. And also just note that how much more fair that would be if we did this for each month. And we only did the adjusting entries for this example problem at the end of the second month with the expectation that we're printing the financial statements for external users as of the second month. But just note how, how much more fair that would be to do comparisons to say that, okay, 917 belongs to February and 917 belongs to January, even though we paid it in January. Because then we can count, then we can look at our net income or loss in this case and compare it from month to month much more easily. If we had 11,000 here, it, like we would in January and zero in February, then our, our comparison from month to month would be very skewed. So we, ne we need to be aware of those types of things when we kind of consider our personal performance, whether we do adjusting entries or not, if we just expensed, for example, the, the insurance then we'd have to go in there if we're, if we're trying to do projections into the future and say, oh, well, you know, what is it that's distorting my net income? Is it, did I pay for anything that's going to benefit me in the future? And if that's the case, then we got to say that this month is comparable to next month and we got to be able to work through that. And that's, that's the accrual process that's really happening here. So if we paid for the, for the insurance, if we recorded 11,000 in one particular month and it looked like that month was bad then we'd have to go down here and say well is did we really buy something that would be benefiting multiple months and if so take that into account when measuring performance from month to month for more accounting information and accounting courses visit our website at accountinginstruction.info